we're out here on a late season archery elk hunt over the counter public land we got here late we're gonna hunt the next two potentially three days and just venture around some new ground and see if we can get into uh, a bull but first since we got here you already know the drill truck camping good food as always this right here is the reward that Nate and I got back in October in Oregon during his high country deer hunt. This is a delicious forky mule deer. Backstrap? Yeah. Backstrap. Backstrap. Oh. What do you think? So good. I haven't had any yet. So good. Ma'am, this was when you're happy it's a forky. <laughs> <laughs> really tender. So tender. We're hungry. Just eating some backstrap and some instant mashed potatoes. It's already like 9.20 p.m. We got camp set up. And we're not going to hunt here. We'll wake up tomorrow morning and we'll drive to the spot we're actually going to hunt. This is just a spot that we can camp. We don't expect to see anything on this hunt. But you can't kill them without trying. Full transparency, we do not know what we're doing. We said we were gonna park down here, hike up this ridge, glass into some open stuff. We got over here, it's nothing but cliffs. So we are gonna find a way to skirt up this cliff wall, hopefully not hurt ourselves, and then pop over into the backside and start glassing. We've already seen some deer. We saw a nice white tail buck earlier. This could be interesting. It's very common for people to dread the ascent. On something like this, the descend is going to be what's treading us. It's pretty dangerous, I'm not going to lie. I don't think this is smart, but we're doing it. Don't recommend it. got up to the first flat of this ridge and we can see a lot of rolling sage. No elk, but we have a lot of deer. They're all bedded down, all scattered throughout the lower part of this ridge across. We've got both whitetail and mule deer, most, mostly mule deer, but we did see two whitetails down. They're still there, two whitetails, a doe and a fawn. And then for mule deer, we have a lot of does, a spike buck that's might be the biggest bodied spike I've ever seen for a deer. Granted, we are in the winter and they're all big. No elk, but I am happy we are seeing critters. We still have a long way, like pretty much, it's gonna take us all day if we hunt our way all the way to where we can't hunt anymore. Meaning we have our day cut out for just a lot of hiking. But now we're slowing down, taking our time because we can glass up just a ton of country. And no elk, no elk sign. But it's just awesome to be out here. Late season, snow on the ground. Really? Mm -hmm. Where? Uh, kind of near the top of that. See how there's like a smaller ridge and then a bigger ridge. The one behind the rock? Yeah. Yeah. Man, those deer like stick out. We 
you take away all the snow though, and they'd be like invisible. Yeah, yeah. we just see them because they're silhouetted against the snow. for the early season archery elk hunter. The consolation prize is grouse. For the late season archery elk hunter, consolation prize is a California quail. We have a flock of them just kind of right against the brush here, 50 yards from here. They are not scared whatsoever. So Nate and I, we're gonna both put a stock, try to shoot them with a bow. Hit him? I don't think so. Did I? I don't know. He did. He's still there. Oh. You did not hit him. I'm going to make sure I can recover my first $50 arrow before I shoot. <laughs> okay. You were just like right over him, I think. That would have been a dead owl. Dead elk. They're all right up behind the man. I feel like if you sneak down, you'll be able to shoot up. You think so? Here. Nice job, dude. You see any more? And all of them flew down except for one that went up, but I haven't seen it. They're all down here. Do you see them? I saw one. They're all in the brush, though. Dude, that's an accomplishment. A quail with a bow? Dude, they are so small. They're tiny. <laughs> they look so big. Now I just want a quail hunt. I mean, I know quails are small, but when we first spotted them, we were like, these are the size of turkeys. Obviously, that's just because they're all fluffed up trying to warm up from this winter. Broadhead looks perfectly fine. Arrow is good. Got him, what a beautiful little bird. We got something to eat tonight. That little horn. So cool. Always appreciative of 
every animal that you take, that I take, even if they're tiny but mighty like this one. That's fun. If I had a shotgun and we were actually upland bird hunting, specifically targeting them, we would have got a whole bag limit. Something that I want to quickly bring up because I might be getting questions. Hunter Orange is not required for archery hunting, at least not for this archery season. The only reason, two reasons, why I'm wearing Hunter Orange, a beanie, is because one, I couldn't find my gray beanie and I knew it was going to be cold, so I just wore what I found. And two, because it was going to be Nate and I hunting, it's snow on the ground, and so if Nate went off on a stalk and he was going to be glassing me for hand signals, if I use like a white game bag, a traditional white bag to flag him down, I mean, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. A white game bag in white out snow like this is going to be insanely hard to read what I'm trying to signal Nate. So with the orange beanie, I can signal him better with this white snow. Just something. Hunter orange is not required for elk or shooting upland bird like quail with a bow. I just wear it because why not? No, that's what I'm saying. They're living somewhere else. Probably at the cougar.
there's like a hundred head in that herd. They're like 400 yards away. They're going off the ridge. We just came down the ridge. It's just too open. We can't make a play. Our win is bad. They're a little spooked. There's like 10, 15 different bulls in the herd and like a ton of cows. They're going off the ridge that we just came down on. There's just no play. We just got caught in such an awkward spot. It just confirms that we did not spook those bucks. That herd spooked those two bucks because when they ran away, they kept looking back where they ran from, not looking at us. We just thought it was odd. Turns out it's a whole herd. That elk herd went up and over into the fog and they just kept moving, they're disappearing. We don't have time. So we're gonna go over here, try to see if there's any stragglers. And if we don't see stragglers, just kind of backtrack and see where they came from. We glassed all of this this morning. So they came from somewhere else. These are the mule deer tracks. Okay, the elk herd went up this way. We're not gonna catch up, we don't have enough time. So we're backtracking the tracks to figure out where these elk came from. We peeked over, over into the next basin over. I just spotted a smaller herd of elk bedded across on this hillside over here. We can't go over there, but we can identify elk. So we're gonna go put the spotter. I think there's at least one bull. We're looking at this small herd of elk. It's six bedded cows and actually two bulls. They're not giant by any means, but branch bulls, which either Nate or I would be through the roof with any bull. And as we're looking over there, there's a buck bed right here, right on that hillside. Just a giant forky. Dude, he's legal three, I think. Really? Yeah. He's like a barely legal, legal three. There's a reason why that buck right there is alive because all the three points get shot. And even if this guy was a three point, if you didn't nitpick his antlers, you would never know he was a three-point. So <laughs> How much do you want to bet? Like, there's probably like so many hunters this season that looked at him. They're like, "Is he a three-point? I don't think he's a three-point." And then they let him go, and he's right there. He's only like 300 yards away, just bedded facing the other way. But we got a herd of elk over here, and yeah, this is our first day of late archery. We qu killed a quail. Already made our day. And we're working our way back to the truck, pretty much. Big old herd of, well, actually, two mule deer bucks, two forkies. It's awesome to see bucks. And then we're like, why are they running? Well, like 100 head of elk to our right, 300 yards away. Went up that way, backtracked, last up at a smaller herd of elk, last up another nice mule deer buck right there. This day has just flipped on its head. Absolutely insane. It's miserable because it's snowing right now and it's cold and the wind's a little chilly. But we got to go back to camp. Unless a miracle happens, we're going to go back to camp and we have to uh, make a serious game plan to work on this herd tomorrow. There's a great chance that Nate and I get both an opportunity. We'll see. We are working back down to the truck. Target acquired. Quail.
There's some deer. It's one big doe and three fawns. That's mama of the year. She's got three fawns with her. That's a healthy doe when they have three fawns. Usually you see twins. This doe has triplets. They're like the cutest little thing. All those fawns are fuzzy with their winter coat. So cool. Late season hunts, it's oftentimes a miss. Today, it's a hit. We've got deer, we've got elk, quail. It's just super eventful. Just could not have asked for a better first day. Well, I guess we can't if Nate can get his own quail. <laughs> What's that make for today? Like 10 bucks? spotter footage. <clears throat> Dude, you don't care. Dude, this would be actually some crisp spotter footage. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Here, let me get it. They're, mo right they're moving off, so they're going over. Nate just spotted two bucks where we ate lunch, I'm gonna use your spot which is at the top. Go ahead. And uh, we're on our way out. We came right here, we have to go up and down, and then we have to scale down the cliff face that we cl climbed up this morning. But we got right here, looked up, we saw three bucks. A one by two, a forky, and a nice four point. And then as soon as I turned this camera on, glassed way up top, and there's two more deer up there, and apparently they're bucks too. A lot of these animals, especially deer at this point, they're moving down in, into lower country because down lower in elevation, the snow is not as thick, so there's more vegetation to go around for deer. And so if these deer are still gonna hang up high in the high country, the snow is probably too thick and they can't survive, they can't eat enough. So a lot of deer are moving down to their wintering grounds. Granted, this isn't even the actual winter grounds, this is like a middle staging area. The actual winter grounds are way down on the flats down here because we've only had like three inches of snow, which three inches of snow is not going to bother deer. It's not enough to push deer all the way down to their wintering grounds yet. But as the winter progresses and the snow accumulates more and more, then this will push down all the deer to the actual wintering grounds. Thoughts on day one? Uh, exceeded expectations. Different than my expectations. I thought we would uh, do a lot of hiking, which we did. I thought we'd see some tracks, which we saw a lot of deer tracks until we saw elk. I did not think we would really see elk, but we did. Uh, so that was pretty pretty sweet day one, especially for a late season on a hunt that neither Samong and I have ever done, so kind of kind of made the hunt for sure. A total of 13 mule deer bucks, well 12 mule deer bucks, one white tail buck, all of which were 2 by 2s except for one 4 by 4 and then we saw a total of around 80 to 90 elk, 17 of which were shooter bulls, 
four of those 17 were branch bowls, the rest were spikes. Uh, and then the rest of that 80 to 90 were cows. Cow elk. So, that's a, that's a pretty hefty uh, late season day for wildlife here in Washington. Especially in a spot where we've never even been to. Yeah, especially <laughs> in a spot that we've never even been to. Couldn't really ask for more. Boil it up. Mm -hmm. On. Been drying out some stuff. It's been a relatively slushy day today. Drying out the stuff that is damp or wet so that tomorrow when we go again, we have good dry clothes and boots and socks to put on. No excuses. Right now, Nate is cooking up caribou backstrap. Nate went on his first Alaskan hunt back in August. He and his dad went on a caribou hunt and Nate shot a bull. So this is going to be our first time eating caribou. At least my first time eating caribou. This is his first time eating caribou backstrap. So yeah. we're pretty excited. Make some good food, caribou backstrap, some potatoes, maybe some ramen if we still want more food. Got a lot of good desserts, hostess Twinkies and Hostess cupcakes. A lot of Gatorade drink up. Should be a epic day too tomorrow. We got here late last night. So we set up camp as fast as we can. Didn't do much touring. So here you guys go for anybody interested in our very basic setup or camping setup. This is my Walmart special six person tent. It's a pop-up tent. It sets up in like 30 seconds. It's just me and Nate so we have plenty of room in there. We have this tent pitched to the off side of the road, the underside of the road because we don't have enough room where we are parked and we, where we have our shade tent. So this is obviously my good old Tacoma. We've got a fire here to the side. Camping chair and we have a log set up between two chairs and this is our drying rack if you will i've got my gators on there nate had his boots down here earlier and then uh this is juice but it's frozen so i'm trying to slowly thaw it out by the fire a lot of the stuff that nate was drying out earlier his pants his insoles his gators and then we have a target set out over there because nate might shoot his bow later and then i have my truck backed up at least half of the trunk backed up underneath the shade tent that way we can cook just like how we are doing here tailgate cooking and if it rains or snows we are protected with the shade tent so pretty nifty little setup here i brought my two totes red tote is cooking this tote is for everything else that's nate's stuff and we got a shovel and obviously Nate is the chef, so he's got his Coleman special two burner propane stove. And then this is my water bottle I left in the truck since uh, whitetail season. And it is frozen solid, so I threw it out here. And then right here, we just have a trash bag hanging because don't litter. So that's camp right there. Fire, truck, and then the tent that we're sleeping in is way over. But... Oh. Yep. So that is caribou backstrap. I have never in my life ate caribou before. Are you waiting for my verdict? I am. It's oh, different. Oh, he's tender. It's tender. It's different. <laughs> the taste. Dude. Not bad. That might be one of my favorite now. Really? Yes. Let me get another bite. That is so good. It's like buttery soft. That is so, the texture is different. Yeah, it's a different texture. It's like a it's almost like a grainy. Like texture. almost livery. Yeah, texture. almost livery texture. Yeah. Which I guess if you don't like liver, that's not a good thing, but I love liver. Caribou might be my favorite. For real. For real, for real. Wow. And I do I do not say that lightly. Yeah, that's um that's that crazy. is good. It's really good. 
Like the, so the texture is like livery kind of. Yeah. But the flavor itself, like, it's not like your deer or elk gaming. Tana, Tanner said you could like taste the tundra kind of. Yes. And you kind of can. I almost like taste like moss in a way. Yeah. But it's not, obviously it's not like gross moss, but. Mm hmm That is, that is amazing. You're not really selling it for your favorite meat. Texture like liver and tastes like moss. But I love liver. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah. It's very different than like any other like Western big game. Like the natural flavor of it, it just strikes me as like, that's delicious. Or maybe I'm just dead hungry and I'm just like, everything's extra good. But no, it's good. Yeah, I really like it. Or maybe it's just so different that it's hitting me in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. I don't think I've ever really eaten a meat like it. Even the burgers. No way. Caribou is... Spe now I want to go shoot a caribou. Today we're going in to that area through a different alternative route. The other route was just a little sketch, scaling up and down cliffs. This one, it's very steep, but you don't have to deal with cliffs. At least I don't think, so far so good. But the reason why we went up the other way yesterday is because as soon as you go up like your first mile, you pop onto a bunch of clearings. Here, you gotta go about a mile in the timber, but it's actually a shorter distance to where we last saw the elk versus coming in the way we did yesterday. It's a little foggy, try to cut tracks. We're on the face that we last saw the elk run up yesterday. I think they ran up like that. We should cut tracks here soon. We've been following these elk tracks for maybe about a mile. They definitely came through here yesterday, shortly after we last saw them. So who knows how far they can be. Right up over here on that ridge, they stopped there to feed around and temporarily bed. We found a couple beds, but we know they did not bed there long because the beds, uh, the snow was not fully melted. If elk bed, for a long time where they bed all the snow would be melted with the little snow that we have but the melt but the snow that we saw in the beds like you could still see like a pretty decent amount of snow so we know they didn't stop there long they were pretty much on a mission they're starting to side hill back into dark timber this way so yeah we're on tracks nothing fresh though we can tell that they're feeding here because this is normally covered with snow. And so what elk will do is they'll like use their hoof to like paw off the snow so that it exposes the vegetation here. And when it exposes the veg vegetation, they can eat it. So this is something where an elk was doing that, just right up here as well. Just hoofing the snow off the top so they can get to the grass. So we know they they were feeding here for a little bit because this place right here, this is all tracks, all the divots in the snow, that's all elk tracks. So they spent some time here, and then I think they went up over here. And then you come here, it seems like they bedded here. You can see this is like partially melted snow, and all the grass is matted down. And you go here, it seems like something bedded here, something definitely bedded here, something bedded here as well. And Right there, and right there, and right there, and right up there. We just caught up to them. I spotted three of them feeding in an opening 200 yards away. We're gonna get set up.
Watch the spike. eating lunch. Those elk that we spotted right up here that cut us off, they eventually worked up and over and they're most likely still up there. But when Nate snuck in, he never saw the spike. He just saw five cows and they slowly fed up. We think the rest of the herd, the big herd, uh, moved up higher on the ridge where we couldn't see them. And then we just got the outskirt herd down low. But now it's so foggy, you can't even see. So we're stuck in a dilemma. We pulled back just to eat some dehydrated meals. So welcome back to another segment of trying dehydrated meals with me. I've already tried this one actually, but Nate hasn't tried it. And this is a new brand, Wild Society. I've tried the breakfast skillet, 10 out of 10. I've tried the wild, you know, the steak fajita and rice or something like that. It's terrible. Uh, this one right here. It's pretty good, but we're going to let Nate have a crack at it because he has not tried it. So, have at her. It's pasta. This one is called Penny a la Vodka. We'll see what Nate thinks about it. That's incredible. It's good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It tastes like um It basically is it tastes really Italian. Yes. Like the Italian dish. It almost has like an authentic taste to it. Mm-hmm. Like you could taste the vodka. It tastes kind of restaurant. <laughs> it tastes fancy. Oh. Yeah. That's really good. No, this one right here is really, really good. Like this is probably like a I would say it's a ten out of ten. Like if Yeah. If you gave And it's different than like because any other brands dehydrated meal. Because this even though this one's pasta. A lot of the pasta we get is like Alfredo, uh -huh. which like the peak refill that I ate yesterday, amazing. But mm -hmm. it's like, this one is different. Mm -hmm. It's not just chicken Alfredo. You get tired of chicken Alfredo after a while, but this one's, this is a hit from Wild Society. Their breakfast skillet and this penny a la vodka, highly recommend from Wild Society. The steak fajita and rice, eh, eh you can try it. I don't recommend it. This one's really good. And this one's got 1,010 calories. It's small, but it's packed to the brim. <laughs> mm. You can ask Simong what he rates this one here. Probably a 6 out of 10. <laughs> it's not bad. I eat it, but it's not my favorite. We are just soaked and miserable right now. Both of us from the knee down is just... We're sloshing a little bit. We're cold. 
we don't have a game plan because we just don't know how to make a play on these elk any anymore. We don't know the country, so we don't know how they travel. And with the fog, you can't even see. Like, we can see maybe a little over 100 yards right now. So you can stalk in because the elk have a hard time seeing you too. But the snow is so loud that you can't stalk because the snow's loud and you can't glass because of the fog. And so you're just in this pit of, we don't know what to do. And you didn't mention the wind. Hmm? And the wind. And third, this wind is horrible. It's so swirly. Every time we do a big loop to get the wind right, we get over there and the wind's good for a little bit and then it switches. And like you can't control the wind and it'll blow out. And fourth, we're hunting relatively open country. And so they can see you coming for a long way. But like I said, that goes back to my point of the fog. The fog is helping cover us, but with the wind and the snow, it's just hard. Wondering if we could get up to that rock. It's not yeah, it's like this. Yeah. It's like, is can you see the fog up there? Is it going in a? I can't tell. Is that a bowl at the bottom? Too shaky. No, it's a cat. This is one of those situations where we literally need to single out one target. Because even though they're clumped up, like you have to make a play on a specific elk. But I don't see a bull. There's just no play. We've been staring at him for like the past hour 30, just trying to think of a game plan in. This is one of those situations where there's just no play. We've, we've thought of every potential route and every time we get to the end of that plan, the idea is it's most likely not gonna work out. You, you don't know until you try, truthfully, but I've hunted it enough to know what's realistic and what's not realistic. We can see like 40 elk but we know this herd's like 80 to 100 head. And that means that we're not seeing 60 elk, which that means the elk could be bedded all around this timber. And when we make a move to the elk we do see, we can just be like unintentionally bumping out elk that we did not know was there on the route to the elk. And also we don't have a lot of time left. So we're just gonna leave the elk be, just let them chill. Yeah, that's it. It's it's hard to see elk like that with a valid tag in hand during season with a bow, but sometimes the reality is you just cannot win. In the front. Yeah, he's one of the ones on the Sahara Horizon. We are back to camp, cleaning up, and then we are headed home. This was a short two-day bonsai, I guess three-day bonsai trip. We're out of time, so even though we know where some elk are, we just don't have time to go after them anymore. This trip, like many bonsai trips, it often ends up way better than you expect it because you don't overthink the hunt and you're 
your expectations are low, so it's really easy to exceed or meet your expectations. And uh, that was a blast, but we're heading home. Appreciate you guys tagging along.